Welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I'm Tanika, and today we're going to be discussing Love is Blind. So, hopefully this doesn't sound any different, probably sounds a little different, probably sounds more like the Sister Wives conversation as well as Blow Deck, that is because I am recording on my phone. So, but yeah, we're just gonna jump into it, of course, as we always do, because this is a Netflix binge. So, the reason that we are here, Love is Blind, Season 5, Episode 5, Don't Give Up on Me. So, Uche tells the guys that she wasn't expressing doubt, because we were kind of coming back to um where we left off with last episode he does say like she's gone like the title of the last episode and you know someone's i think it was jp says like you know maybe she got cold feet or no sorry izzy said it maybe she got cold feet then he tells everyone that he knew lydia before no one else knew besides milton obviously he didn't find out from Uche, he found out from Lydia. And then in his kind of in the moment, he asks production, so she's gone, like she's really gone, no contact with her, nothing. He says he is confused by everything, which I do understand why he's confused, because she left it off as, you know, we're good. So I do understand it. Um, he thought they were on the same page. So production says they can give him her contact information and he can contact her on his own time after this. Um, but someone does end up calling Aaliyah while Luce is there and she does agree to talk to him. So I just want to preface guys through most of this. He's very agitated. He's actually a little aggressive with her, kind of rude, pretty much a dick for most of this. Did I disagree with some of the things that he was saying to her? No, but I think his approach with it was a little problematic, along with everything this man has done throughout this whole thing. So anyway, why would I expect different... Um, he asks her what happened, and she says there was an exchange of words between her and Lydia, and it didn't go well. She says that she was kind of already on edge about things, and she apparently made a comment to Lydia about, you know, if it doesn't work out between herself and OJ, that Lydia could have him back. And Lydia says to Aaliyah, fuck you, I don't want him. Okay. He does ask, and I said this as well, why would you say something like that? So, I'm a little taken aback by her comment. Like, I do understand her being on edge. I do understand her just being in her head. And I'm sure Lydia didn't help that. 100%. 100%. As we've seen, Lydia did not help. But at the same time, I'm thinking, but why would you tell him this? Or sorry, tell her this. That doesn't seem like the right approach. And I did agree with him. Like, why would you say that to her? I do feel like Stacy's approach to this, after watching probably so many seasons of the show, was like, Mm-mm, I'm not touching this. I'm not going to entertain other women. I'm not going to tell anybody where I'm at with people. I'm like, I'm not doing it. So I, um, I think she should have done the same, obviously. She, does tell him, like, I felt smothered by her, which I totally understand. 
because we did see as soon as she knew, Lydia knew. Lydia was all over her ass. Kind of be like, oh, we're the same. I know his friends. I want his dog. And he has, you know, his car and his apartment's pissed. And he's OCD. Oh, we fucked three months ago. You know what I mean? Like, I definitely understand that she probably 100% felt smothered by her. She said, every convo I had with her, she brings you up. And she just, she didn't want that. She didn't want it to be constantly reminded about their history. He says, but why let some girl get between us? It's not just some girl, Luce, it's your ex-girlfriend whom you had sex with three months ago. It's not just some girl. In terms of let her get between us, that's, you have to understand, she's stuck with this woman 24-7. If you were, if the tables were reversed, you wouldn't be handling it well either. So, yeah, that's not fair of him. He then says, you let some girl come between us because of something she says. He asks, how do you feel about me in this moment? And she says that she still loves him. I, okay. <laughs> he says, then why are you here? I personally, I think she made the right decision, no matter how she feels about him. You didn't need, she didn't need to be there. She didn't need to be there. She needed to get the fuck out of there. Can you imagine how things would have been um, at the, in Mexico, if they were all there, it would have been an absolute mess. He then tells her, if you can't be in a room with my ex without leaving, then we could never have gotten to that point of getting engaged or married. Okay, so you're trying to tell me that the, the, the requirements of an engagement is me being locked up in a fucking room with your ex-boyfriend and because I didn't pass the fucking test and then I'm not, I'm not good enough. Yo, fuck you. Really and truly, OJ, fuck you. Because the thing is, again, as I said a minute ago, if the tables were turned and you had to do the same thing, he would, he'd be having a fucking shit show. He would be losing his fucking mind. He couldn't handle it. He wouldn't be able to handle it. He would have actually not continued a relationship with Aaliyah, yet he expects Aaliyah to continue a relationship with him fuck this guy um so Aaliyah says well you know what if that's okay so Aaliyah actually says how do you not know when she was at your house a few months ago that she didn't see an email on your computer applying for this damn show his response to this is are you fucking kidding me no she ain't because I'm pretty sure, and I mentioned this on the fourth, the last episode, was that's the conspiracy theory that, you know, Ava started and I hopped on board with. And I said, I could definitely see that somewhere in the world, Lydia knew he was going to be on the show. And she, and she did what she had to do in order to make sure she got on the show. I know for a second think that production did not know that she knew another potential contestant on the show. And I'll buy it for a minute. The thing is, is like I push blame on one or both of them, but I also push blame on, on production. They fucking knew. I mean, thank you. I love the drama and talking about it, but like you, you knew. 
You knew. Anyway, he says, I don't know why she's here. You may not know why she's here, but could you at least acknowledge what Aaliyah just said? He then says, you had to be in a room with her for one more day. No, Uche, she was going to have to see her throughout this process. It wasn't going to stop with that. Anyway, he says, instead, you just left. He says, were you thinking of me when you when you made this decision? He says, no, you weren't thinking of yourself. Of course she was thinking of herself. At the end of the day, it's me, myself, and I, honey. Like, I'm not going to think about you. I'm not going to think about you. Sorry, we're not engaged. I just found out your fucking ex-girlfriend is here, whom you had sex with three months ago. And knowing probably this process doesn't just happen, he had already applied for the show. So I'm just like, yo, bro, like, again, tables were turned would you be thinking of her no you would have dipped so fucking fast faster than she did faster than the speed of fucking light don't tell me that like don't tell me that this <laughs> i this fucking guy he's the worst and i feel like every woman should steer fucking clear of this guy I do have some information on him, and I'm still trying to decide if I want to go po delivering the information, but I probably will wait till the last batch of episodes for this, for this, so episode, uh, seven. So, yeah, I'm just like, yo, dude, he, he's grimy, say the least. She says to him, were you thinking about me? And he says, I was getting ready to propose to you today. So yes, I was thinking of you. No, no, you weren't. I mean, okay, maybe in the grand scheme of things, in the beginning, yes, you were. Because, yes, you were going to propose to her. But when you saw that that shit wasn't going to happen, you felt embarrassed. You felt blindsided, which is fine. But... Now, when you find out the reason as to why she was, she left, and come on, you must have always known the reason why, deep down, why she left, and you're just making it about you, and how she inconvenienced you. I think Sharon mentioned it well on the other episode. I think we were mainly talking about Shawnee, but we might have been talking about him today too. I can't remember. But we don't we don't claim him. We don't claim him in the law industry. I don't know who the f fuck this guy. No. He must be a criminal lawyer. He must be a slimy criminal lawyer. He must be like, you know, the equivalent of OJ's lawyers. Anyway. Let's continue. He and then says, you know, you didn't even leave a letter. He says, I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. I knew I would fall for the wrong person. And then she says, well, if that's how you feel, then maybe we shouldn't be talking. And he says, no, we're not going to talk. And then all of a sudden, even though she had her, her defenses up and saying, that maybe we shouldn't be talking, that that's how you feel. She immediately switches gears when he says that to her and says, please don't make that decision right now. What are you holding on to? This is one thing I'm going to say to her is that I really, really like Aaliyah. First of all, I'm going to say that more preface. But the one thing I'm going to say is you made the choice to dip out of there because you knew in your gut that this was not going to work out well between Lydia and, and him. You knew this. So why now are you then turning around and saying, no, don't give up yet? You gave up the minute you walked out of the pods. So I'm confused by her saying that to him because I'm like, what, what's your end goal here? Anyway, he then kind of says to production, kind of while she's still on the phone, says, I don't want to talk to her anymore. 
because I don't want her number. I never want to see her again. And he walks away. That's it. Or is it? <laughs> for OJ and Aaliyah for now, anyways. We do know we see them again, but yeah, that's it for them. I, I just thought he was being such an asshole to her. But anyway. So the rest of this is probably not going to be very long just because these couples are boring as fuck without drama. But anyway. So now Lydia and Milton are meeting. He is worried he will look too young because he doesn't quite look 24, I guess. And anyway, doors open, silhouettes, blah, blah, blah. And Janet, like, runs to him towards the end of the walk and they kiss and he tells her she's beautiful. We find out here that he's six, seven, y'all. God damn. <laughs> I think I actually wrote down Lord Jesus. Anyway, she tells him that he's a humongous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, but I said, like, they seem to be connecting. That's great. Whatever. We'll see. I don't trust her. And that's the biggest thing is I just don't trust Lydia. Um, but anyway, enough of that. All the couples have met. And they were now heading to Mexico. Cancun, to be exact. And I wrote down, so we're seriously only having three people, three couples, like, it's boring. Anyway, we go and walk into Taylor and JP's room, and there's a violinist just playing something in the middle of the room. It was weird. She brings up, though, how awkward they are together, like, when they try to have conversations. He says that um he's just awkward um so milton apparently always has to correct her english um she doesn't want him to grow a beard although i don't know why but anyway he says maybe i'll grow it out and have a goatee we'll see and then i wrote down that Lydia is basically Jessica 2.0 because she has to constantly talk about his age. Um, I mean, at least they're only six years apart. Whereas Jessica and that dude were ten years apart. But she constantly has to talk about his age. And it's a little annoying. It's a little annoying. Anyway, back with JP and Taylor. They're in the hot tub. And... He, someone brings up minute to win it. What a blast from the past. Whoa. Anyway, she does not want to go through a divorce. She said that's very important to her that they don't go through a divorce. And he worries if she will be ready at the end of the four weeks. I don't know. I didn't quite catch why he's concerned about her being ready. It's more about her being ready about him. Which isn't totally, like in general, being ready. I'm not too sure, but anyway. He then tells her he put the toilet seat down. Okay. Um, the only thing I had to mention here with the next scene with Lydia and Milton is that they showered together. Now, I don't know if it got, you know, a little more, you know, R rated, but anyway. Um, then we go back with um, JP and Taylor, and they both notice each other's eyes the first time they met. Fun. Um, told you this is going to be so, so nothing here. <laughs> and then Stacy and Izzy are, the for them, the most surprising thing, um, particularly for her, was... I guess it's Dick. I was a little confused here, but I'm assuming that's what she meant. Um, she said that she might have also broken the toilet. She clogged the toilet, y'all, and it's no longer flushing. My God. 
And then she also sings like that song. I I wish I could remember which children's show it's from. I honestly can't remember, but I know it's a show my brother used to watch. Oh, Pippi Longstocking. So it actually wasn't one that my brother watched. It was what I watched. It was that, you know, what shall we do today? What shall we do today? <laughs> and I'm like, that's a kid's show. And I wasn't taunting on me which kid's show it was, but yes, Pippi Longstocking. Whoa. <laughs> I actually used to sing that song to myself all the time because of that freaking pip. So it was finally out of my head, I think, after many years. And now it's right back in there. Now that exactly, I now remember where it's from. My brain works weird. <laughs> but yeah. Um, so anyway, she does that. And it's basically it. I guess what they're going to do today, though, is fix the toilet. So Taylor and JP... They're sitting having some coffee, but they're really awkward together. She does end up asking him a question, which is, can you see yourself sleeping with me for the rest of your life? And he just kind of stares at her for the longest time and doesn't say a damn thing, but then says, it was nice. That's not quite the, you know, answer she was looking for and then he kind of s starts like laughing I guess he thinks this is funny it's the weirdest thing and you could tell like this took her back a little bit when he started laughing and um he kind of asked the question back to her whether or not he can she he she can see sleeping with him for the rest of her life and she says well you don't snore i'm just joking but in her like in the moment if that's what you want to call it kind of interview after the fact she um got so emotional at this because she's like clearly wanting this to work and wanting them to be able to have conversations because her biggest concern as we see throughout is she doesn't want to constantly be the only person to make conversation with the other she kind of wants to see him do the same and he isn't doing that he kind of his excuse is that he's shy and he's introverted but listen i am not like as shy of a person as I used to be. I was very shy as a kid. Um, and I'm able to, I'm, I'm shy to an extent in the beginning of all relationships, new relationships that I have, especially more so the romantic ones, obviously haven't been having to create a new romantic relationship now for quite some time, but I'm usually always pretty weird and quiet in the beginning but eventually i do warm up to you and i am able to have conversation with you but i am also naturally an introverted person i like to keep to myself stay to myself um i don't like talking to people unless i really truly have to although here i am with podcast <laughs> but i I like to stay within myself but that doesn't mean that i'm not able to have conversation that doesn't mean i'm not able to create conversations with my partner and that's I think very important in a relationship and both people need to be able to have conversation and he's not capable of doing it it was the whole staring in the the ether not saying anything to her I'm like hello is anyone home it felt very you know part one of the B90 tell-all with Dempsey just kind of staring out in the middle of space when she's asked a question. It's like, ma'am, do you, do, you, do you need something? Are you okay? I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> Did you malfunction? Like, what's going on? That's how I felt here. It was like, do you need help? <laughs> but, um, anyways, so back with Lydia and Melton, 
she just keeps talking about um, how he looks younger than his age. Ma'am, let me tell you something. She's kind of like, oh, you look 21, you don't look 24. And I'm like, ma'am, black don't crack. There's something about the fact that he, I don't, listen, there's the, I've said this joke a few times to other people in my life, that when I was 22, 23, I was able to get in to um, a zoo out in my area. We have like our major Toronto Zoo. Um, we also have a zoo that's a little more east of that. And we went to the one that's a little more east of that because unless you've been to Toronto Zoo, it's big, it's a lot of walking and hills and it's 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 a lot whereas this particular zoo that we went to called the, Bowman, the Bowmanville Zoo um which is in a town called Bowmanville we um it's not like that <laughs> at all anyway we were able to get me in at a teenage rate which I think was I can't remember made us pass made me pass at 17 basically even though I am not 17 and I wasn't 17. I was early 20s. And I'm like, okay, all right. Because I could pass as such. You look at my mom, you wouldn't think she's the age that she is. When people find out how old she is, they're shocked. But the fact that she also has a child that's in her 30s could potentially be a pretty big giveaway. You look at my grandma, you wouldn't think she is the age that she is. Um, cause black don't crack. So Lydia, stop pointing out the fact that this man looks younger than he is and all that is. And I'm like, okay, what? It's because black doesn't crack, ma'am. It's a truth thing. Don't know why. Don't know how. But it's just how it is. And I'm tired of the Jessica 2.0. Anyway. So Izzy is worried about seeing Lydia. So now we can see that they're going to be doing the meetup. And, um, but everyone else he says he's pretty good about. Then we see Lydia saying that after seeing Izzy, she has no regrets. So now I think they're actually on the beach now and they've seen each other. And she says after seeing him, like she has no regrets about being with Milton. But I feel like you got forced into direction. Am I wrong? <laughs> um, so, um, Izzy thinks that she is attractive, talking about Lydia, and that she has nice hair, and now he's planning to go talk to her. And he tells her, you know, he cares about Lydia, and he says, you know, when I cut you off, I was all about Johnny. So he needs a piece for talking about his fucking journey and actually doesn't give Lydia much of a chance to speak. Um, because it's all about Johnny and then Stacy came around and all of this. But, you know, is he is only talking about himself, like I mentioned in his experience, not letting her talk about anything. But she does eventually say, you know, it wasn't all on you. And he tells her there was a connection, just he had a stronger connection with others. And she says to him, like, I don't hold a grudge. And, you know, if it wasn't meant to be, then it wasn't meant to be. I'm not going to sing the song. We're going to go past it. So Stacy asks about Taylor and JP, we asked Taylor about JP, and she says that she doesn't feel comfortable with him now, um, that she felt in the pods, she felt more comfortable with him in the pods. She says, like, I don't want to say that I feel unsafe because I don't, but she doesn't feel as comfortable now with him. And she does wonder if she made a mistake saying 
Yes. So then Taylor and JP, they're now talking with each other and she kind of like looks at the other couples and she's feeling a certain way about things. She says it feels like those other couples are more invested than they are. And he feels like, you know, they are on the right path. Okay. Um, he felt like when they got here, she kind of seemed like she wanted to go. So that's interesting. I don't know where he got that from. I don't know if he's feeding his own insecurity into it. I don't know if maybe she says something for him to feel that way. I don't know. But I never got that impression that she was going to dip. So I'm curious to know like where he got that from. And his then response to that is, let me shut down. So that also shows like his emotional immaturity is not even there. So he does tell her that he feels like they can get past this. He says that he is never going to give up on her. And she just feels like if she can't, you know, constantly be the only one creating conversations for the rest of her life with him. And I do understand that because it feels like he's stunted in some way. I don't know. I know he's a firefighter, so I wonder, is this like a PTSD response? I don't know. Like, it depends on what he's seen. I don't know. Maybe he hasn't seen anything too crazy. But what if... What if he has? So I don't know. But that's it for episode five of Love is Blind. So if you like what you heard, please share reality tea times two with everyone in your life. That's going to help with our growth. And we really want to grow this podcast. Another way you can grow it is by also rating and reviewing us on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. The links to those podcast links to the Spotify and Apple Podcasts will be in the show notes. You can find us on any of your favorite podcast apps, but if there is an app that you don't see us on, that you want to see us on, please let me know and I can get that up on my podcast app. If you are an avid YouTube user, you can listen to this podcast on YouTube by going to Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by connecting with us on either Facebook at Reality Tea Times 2 or Instagram and threads at Reality Tea Times 2 Podcast. You can also email us. We would love to hear from you. Also, if you want to guest on the podcast at some point, whether we talk about your favorite show or just get to know each other, you can email us at realitytimes2 at hotmail.com and you can make that request and we can talk and we can figure that out. So you can email us at that email. We have a new website where you can get links to everything. You can get links to our Facebook page, Instagram page, threads, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, everything your heart's desire, as well as we do now have a Discord so you can you can follow us and talk to us on the Discord app. You can get all of that information at the website and the website is www.solo.to forward slash reality t times two. I also have a new podcast with my friend Mikkel called Next Take Podcast. And you can either listen to us at Ria at YouTube at the link that's going to be in the show notes. I believe that is Next Take Podcast. And you can also go to our website there. You can have all the links to all of our social medias, email, everything, our episodes as well will be at the website, which is www.solo.to forward slash next take podcast. All of the information, everything that I have just said 
will be in our show notes. Well, that's it for now, guys. Thanks. Bye.